teleprompter. <laughs> 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 like that, you can let them know. <laughs> I got my tele All right. Here's a teleprompter, y'all. Let me get quiet over here. We on? Hey, you guys. Uh, good to see everybody. I say to see everybody. We're not seeing anybody. We just say that. What about just see say you. some automatic things? Here we go. Uh, hey, welcome today to just hanging out with us as we rest together in the refuge. And uh, let me get this shared real quick and we'll get started. Got, Can you turn uh, that shirt down just a little bit? Oh, I, can't, I can't turn the shirt down just yet. Hey, wait, what's the matter, Corey? I sent Corey a picture earlier. I said, look, here's the shirt for the day. Mike matched in, but Corey said that whoever gave us these shirts loved him more than they loved us, so didn't get him Listen, I was trying to help him when I was on the computer. I would, I would show this louder. I think he got the wrong message. In my <laughs> shirt. Hey, you better hope we're done with this before Christmas, because hey, yeah. I got some ties, man. <laughs> anyway, so we just got back from uh, the Fair Request Friday show, and David and I were together this morning, and I said, man, jump in here with us, and so he's yeah. with us. Good to see everybody today. Hey, uh, let's, just, let's just start by going straight to the refuge let's together today. Let's Father, in yes, Jesus' Lord. name, yes, we Lord. thank you. We declare that you are our refuge. You, we Lord. receive from you all of the peace, all right of the strength, right all of the hope, all of the light, all of the joy, all of the all of the reflection of who you are that you mean for us to have to reflect today to the body of Christ and those who will watch and to listen. And so thank you, Father, that would you use these moments, God, to do far more than we could ever claim to be able to do in bringing hope and encouragement Christ. to us and to those who listen today. Thank you, Father. You yes, are a refuge Lord. in Jesus' name. Jesus. Amen. 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 Glad to see you. Glad you're here. Amen. Well, let's start with a little bit of word. One of today's Psalms, Psalm 63. I Absolutely. just want to read one, one verse from Psalm 63. Because you have been my help, therefore, in the shadow of your wings, I will rejoice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because you've been my help, because I know I've received help from the Lord, because he's helped us in the shadow of your wings, I'll rejoice. Now that lets us, that's a picture of us, we're still, we're under his covering, he has us covered, uh, we're under the shadow of his wings, which, we, which means we need to be covered, mm -hmm. but we confess that we are covered, we're experiencing his covering, his watch care over us. And while we're where we need to be, we can rejoice, no matter what's going on above those wings. He said, Thank you, Lord. Have been. And that's, when you read that, that's the first thing that jumped out. Have been means this. Right where he is is not just where he is because he's already been somewhere else. And the somewhere else he's been, God was there too. So now in the midst of something that the psalmist may not be aware of, yeah. or may not have dealt with, he's still with the same rest. He's still with the same refuge that he was before. So now he says this. Because you have been my help. I, I was thinking about this the other day and almost brought it up on the resting in the refuges. Is moments like these, they're either faith builders or faith strengtheners. Right. They really are because these are the moments where faith has to be used by a person mm -hmm. of faith. Um, it has to be exercised to know what you got and yeah. how much of what you got and what you need. Right. Uh, so when he says this, you have been my help, these folks uh, who've been this, uh, in situations like this before, this is a great opportunity for us to extend faith to someone who may not have been through something like this yeah. before, not dealt with the stress and the anxiety. And and at the same time, if you're listening, you're like, man, the reason why I'm tuning in every day is because I'm still needing something. I'm still needing yeah, to grow. Sure. I'm just needing to re yeah. reach out and grab something or someone to help me yeah. through. Yeah, at least you're recognizing that at, now. So this is a locator for, at, for it, absolutely yeah, to, to recognize, man, I... I just now realize I've not really been trusting God. I've sure. not been depending on Him, you know. So I've not been resting completely in Him. Yeah, absolutely. So we, we learn a lot about ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> well, Amen. There's so much that we could say uh, just just from that. But again, that takes me back to the thought we had the other day about what Paul said when he said, "I." am persuaded yes you know and he was persuaded because of his experience with yes. the lord the lord is he's the same yesterday today and forever his watch care his love his grace his mercy uh, they've been sufficient all this time i love what somebody said yesterday after we talked about uh psalm 32 and where it says call upon him while he may be found uh, and somebody commented, they said, yeah, man, don't wait till you're in a bind to start calling oh, on him. Mm -hmm. uh, because you don't want to call on a stranger when you're in a time of hell. Yeah. Amen. And uh, thankfully, he's no stranger to your needs or circumstances. Uh, but, man, uh, when you're...
when he's a consistent part of our lives, it makes it so much easier to rest in him because we know who, how he's been faithful. Mm -hmm. Amen. Well, what you guys got? You know, I, I thought about a thousand different things, and let me just say hey to some people. We've got a ton of folks watching already today. Rodney White, man, I've been missing you, bro. It's good to see All you. All right. Man, come Praise across here. Well, Mike Cohen, Randy had a birthday. Uh, yes, there's, there's Paula watching. Hey, we love you guys. I miss just being able to all be together. Uh, but anyway, we're glad we're able to, to be able to be together in this way. Uh, I was thinking about, you know, last week we talked about some of those disciplines. And at some yeah. point, let's get back to talking about some of those. But anyway. I, I, I appreciate our brother being able to be here today. And I, I know you're already, already got something, but I know you're <laughs> always ready to pop in something. Let, let me turn that around. We're talking about, if you're just joining us, welcome. Resting in the refuge, but we're talking about in Psalm 63, Pastor read, because you have been my help. We're talking about faith that we have, that we know from God being with us before when we walk into something new. Mm -hmm. uh, but let's flip that around. What about the person who, who really uh, wants to have faith? Yep. They, they want to get to a point mm -hmm. where they can rest. They, what, what do you say to that person? Say, I really want to express my faith. I'm just struggling. Yeah, uh, so you referenced that verse that Paul said, I know whom I have believed in right. and am persuaded. Mm -hmm. And you kind of landed on the persuaded part. Uh, but first he said, I know whom I believed in. When, I had to study that script, that verse out not too long ago for something that the Lord was building in me. Those two words, believed in and persuaded, we, we tend to want to, in the English, lump those into sure. the same concept. Sure. It's almost like he repeated himself or said something right. the same way, maybe a little different, just used a different word. That's not what Paul was saying. Paul said, there was a time in my past when I made the choice, I nailed this down, that I'm going to make Jesus my Lord. At that moment, he made the decision, I have believed in him. That was a one-time decision made. Yeah, I believe. When he goes forward to say, I am persuaded, even though it was a, in the English, it's, a, it's got an ED attached to it, so it's like something he did in the yeah, past. But it's present. It is a present, ongoing process. So Paul said, at one point in my past, I made the decision to go with Christ. And every day since then, I'm being persuaded yeah. more and more and more yeah. that the choice I made was the right one. He's proving right. himself. Right. And so when I think of the faith concept that you're bringing into this, Paul on that road to Damascus got knocked off his feet in, in such a way by Jesus Christ that he couldn't get over it. Right. And so maybe you're in a moment where you're seeing the circumstances of this corona crisis or whatever that looks like in your living room, wherever you are right now, and you can't get over the fact that you know you need Jesus in this moment. So you're ready to make that decision. That's a faith step, and it's a gift of faith he's already given you. You don't have to figure out how to come up with the faith. He's already gifted you with the faith. you just got to shine it on the right object. So when you turn that faith to Jesus Christ and make the decision for him, he's going to put you on a journey to start being persuaded yeah. every day a little bit more. Good. Ongoing he's persuasion. Going to keep on yeah. proving himself to you through this relationship right. that he desires. Present persuasion, ongoing persuasion. Yeah. Go ahead. I, thought, I thought of Job 42.5. Right when you were saying that, I flipped this. Is that it? Yeah. He says, I've heard you with the hearing of the ear. Oh, but now. But now. <laughs> you see, that, that's yeah. the past Amen. and the present. When we move from lack of faith or no faith to expressing and encountering faith in Christ, that rest we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Even if we walk through, look, look with this Psalm 63. Listen to these words again. Listen to the movement. Oh God, you are my God. Mm -hmm. Early yeah, will I you. seek you. Yeah. He's looking. My soul thirsts for you. He's needing. My flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. Yeah. So I have Look, see, if you're going to grow in faith, you've got to somewhere reach out. You've got to express it, and not just in anything, but in the one. So I've looked for you where? In the sanctuary, to see your power and your glory. Because your loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise, praise you. you. It doesn't say, it doesn't say he's come through something just yet. Yeah. But because he sees who God is and he's heard who God is, he's going to open his mouth and say, God, I trust you. Yeah. God, I'm going to praise you. As the song says, I'm going to praise you in the storm. He's Amen. still right there. Uh, I was just thinking, man, it's hard to get a word in Israel if you've got so many preachers around here, man. <laughs> <laughs> We're excited about this, though. Hey, but, you know, when you're reading that, I just noticed again, the first confession that has to be made there in the end of verse 1 where he says, uh, he's looking in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. And he automatically realizes that, hey, there's only one source for me to get what I need, and it's not sure. the land I'm in. It's not the place I'm from. It's not this temporal dwelling. Uh, there's, the, I've got to look to the hills from which comes my help. You know, uh, the help is not in the world or in the things of the world. 
but the help can only come from the Lord. And that's why he says, so have I looked in your sanctuary to see your power and your glory. I, I know I have a need that only God can meet. Mm -hmm. Only God can meet. In verse 8, again, there's so much in here, but Psalm 63, verse 8, my soul follows close behind you. Thank you, Lord. Again, there's a drawing near. He draws near as we draw near. And, and we talked, you talked about yesterday, that Bluetooth, getting close enough yeah. to that device that that connectivity is there. Yeah. These are those moments where God is saying, hey, draw near because I'm right here. Hey. Draw near. Come near. And I'll show you what I can do. I'll show you how I am strong. Yeah. So while the signal's there, man, connect. Mm -hmm. you know, hit, the, hit the accept button. Yeah. There's so much. Um, it's so easy for, for people represented by some people in this room. It doesn't matter if you've got a, a title like pastor or not. Right. It's so easy for us to get in places in life that are we're not being pushed or pulled or stressed or strained. We have some of those moments where everything's, you know, just a few weeks ago, everything felt pretty normal. And we know our faith ought to be on Christ. We ought to be living that way. But it's easy without intentioning, being intentional about this to start relying on our own ability to take care of normal sure. circumstances. Sure. So here comes Corona, and yeah. it knocks out all of our props, and it, it pulls our crutches away, and it forces us mm. to, to lean. Mm -hmm. right, right. And so it, and God does this on purpose. Now, am I saying that God sent the coronavirus? Well, that's his business. I'm not speaking for him on that account. But right. Right. if it's here, he's going to use it. Absolutely. And so Absolutely. what he Thank will you, do is he will take this and say, okay, I'm going to take that crutch that you think is you, and, and you've got this, you don't have what you think you've got. Let me yeah. let me shake your house of cards, yeah. And, and, yeah. and then you will be forced to lean on me. When I'm seeing some of these things that David is saying, it's almost like it's almost like God saying he, he he was able to pull away what he thought was life and was living and get to the source of what is life and living. And he began to say, I've got to rely on this, mm -hmm. on you, because everything mm -hmm. else can come and go. Temporary stuff comes and goes. It's that eternal, unmoving God yeah. that we're learning how yeah. to lean on in these yeah. moments. Well, and once again, just with what you're saying, we've talked about this all week long. It's the difference in depending on resources rather than the source. Yeah. And so we move from the resources to the, the source, and we, and we know where, where that comes from. But God puts us in a place to realize that, just like you said, if he, if he allows us to be in a position where he removes those things that we are allowing to support us. You know, one time somebody did something that was just really disappointing, and, and a friend of mine said, man, uh, you know, aren't, aren't you... Didn't, Aren't you just crushed that, that this happened? I said, no, look, I, I can't. He's not what was holding me up. Right. You know, that circumstance is not what was holding me up. I, I, I'm depending on a whole other source. And But, but I mean, often we have our eyes in the wrong place, and God will use these things to get to us in the right place. Yeah. Redirect it, absolutely. Yeah, to, to, we talk about the refocus, and again, he says it two or three times, seek you, I, I look for you. Uh, th this concept of where are you looking? It, it really right sizes who we are and where our faith is. Really right sizes where our faith is, right. because we may find out the things we've been looking at, the things that would get us, like coming to a fellowship. All those things are great. Trust me, we we for really miss seeing you guys and being with Absolutely. you, guys. But at the same time, when you look at that, the fellowship is a resource of His presence. Okay, it's a resource. It is not the source of His yeah. presence. You can right. have that on your own just like we can. We yes. better have that yeah. on our right. own. These we times are going to be real shallow. Yeah, we got nothing else to offer if, we, if all we got to our head. And these moments yeah. kind of do that. They help us right size what is the source and yeah. helps us refocus. So today, right there, and let's stop and just pray. I don't know if this is the first time or, or several times you've tuned in, but wherever you are today, let's just pray this simple prayer. God, today, mm -hmm. help me refocus. Mm -hmm. God, today, help me see what yes. I need to see yes. right now. So, yeah. Father, that's what we pray. Thank you, Father. God, you gave sight to the blind, and, Lord, there are things that we clearly are missing exactly. in moments like this. Thank People you. were missing. Resources were missing. Relationships were missing. God, help us see today what we need to. Mm -hmm. yes. Lord, speak, touch our eyes, and let that's us see today. Yes, in Father. Jesus' Thank name. You. Thank you. Amen. 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 Pastor Mike? Amen. All right, we got a few communications. A lot of people watching and welcome. Resting in the refuge, yeah. day number 455 or whatever. <laughs> Not important. God's mercy is limitless uh, right there. Hey, uh, praise note, Ed Holt, our trooper friend, uh, Mary's son, 
Uh, fever had broke this morning. Yes. Uh, still in the hospital, still having the cough and, and very, very tired and the headache, but a, a step forward. And our brother, Steve Minner, Come on. Uh, pastor over at Rock Creek Baptist Church, old bashful Steve, <laughs> right. uh, went for a cancer follow-up today. And uh, uh, Doc says, it, okay, it's gone. Yeah. Go thank God. You, Lord. Amen. Go God. Yes. <laughs> Amen. Thank and you, Lord. Rodney, uh, Rodney uh, we, we prayed for his brother-in-law uh, yesterday. Uh, praising God for a successful surgery. Uh, went good for that. And a personal friend of mine, Gus, um, over in Hot Springs, he had surgery in Hot Springs yesterday to remove his thyroid. Uh, he's get, fixing to go home now, so he's older than me even, so we're, we're, we're really thankful for that. Thank you, Lord. And then Mary with an unspoken request. Okay. And if yeah. we could see you raising your hands out there, we've all got at least one Absolutely. unspoken request, and sure. God knows them. Everybody don't need to know the details. Absolutely. So uh, that pretty well catches us up on the requests that we know about right now. Lots of people are watching, and we, and we welcome you. We, we invite you to share this if you like. And be sure and comment in with your prayer request. Not Absolutely. that God hears it any better if we know about it, but there'll be more people praying. Yeah. Absolutely. As a matter of fact, David, why don't you go ahead and pray over those right quick. Yeah, over these names that Brother Mike has, has yes, uh, spoken. Yes. Bless and, them, Lord. And Lord, Bless for them. those that have that unspoken uh, yes, prayer God, request, wherever we'll they are right now, well, God, we thank yeah, you that yeah, though we may not have to me. move our mouths and, and voice it, uh, it is not unspoken to you. You are well aware yes, of our moment of Lord. need. And Father, you've given us the uh, the call to come boldly before the throne of grace, to receive mercy, to receive grace to help in our time of need. We thank you, God. We join with the, with worship and praise for Brother Steve, for the uh, the awesome report that, that he and that the, the family over at uh, Rock Creek have received. We thank you for a cancer free. We thank you, Lord, that that uh, you are God in that situation. You proved yourself one more time, and I know that they are excited and rejoice. And we we give you praise for that for a Brother Holt that's coming. Through. Yes. Thank you. Lord, we thank you that, that, you that you are walking him through. Show and for family that are watching you do that, Lord, we pray that you would just make yourself another testimony of your grace and your ability. Uh, Lord knows that that family will talk about it when he comes through that other side. And we're going to give you praise ahead of time for what you're doing in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hey, uh, and included in that prayer, even though the Lord just sees that ahead of it, but I didn't mention Sandy's name, but this is Gayla's sister Sandy. You've been in St. Michael on ICU. She was on the ventilator, but not with COVID, but she's just got, got some other issues, but she's able to come off the vent, thank you, Lord, and uh, doing some better, but remember Sandy. All right. Well, but this Sunday, I was thinking, as I was preparing song service and stuff uh, for Sunday, this may be the weirdest Palm Sunday right, uh, yeah. we've ever celebrated. Uh, because you know, the different. first one was pretty weird. Uh, yeah, the first one was definitely weird. <laughs> but you think about that. Point. <laughs> <laughs> they came out of nowhere, right? Yeah. They sure. started gathering along the road uh, as Jesus, and, and it's the, the biblical moment called, known as the triumphal entry. Yeah. yeah. As he's making his way to Jerusalem, right. they start at Bethsaida and Bethphage. They start uh, forming on the side of the road by the mountains and everything and by the rocks, and they're crying out, Hosanna, Hosanna. Um, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Yeah. And this is what's powerful. Even in a moment like this, we talked about praying in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. That name, Hosanna. <clears throat> oh, God, come save. Yeah. Or God, save now. What a, what a cry for us. What a Palm Sunday Woo, for us to experience right in the middle. As, uh, yesterday, <laughs> yesterday, I believe it was yesterday or, or the day before, globally we hit one million, yesterday, yeah. one million cases of this virus, one yeah. million. That that is crazy in my lifetime. That's that's history book. Of course, it will be now. Mm -hmm. yeah. But if there's ever a time for the world to call right. out for Hosanna, sure, for God to come save, this is that moment. And you don't have to wait to Sunday to do that. But man, yeah, what, what, what does that mean for you? Thinking about in Jesus' name and that that he, that he was given the name of Savior, that He comes as the Savior. He didn't get the title of Savior. He was given he it by that, the one. Yeah, that, you know, that's who he is. It's kind of like when we say, man, God is good. We're, we're not just saying we think he's good. We're saying he's the source of what is good. Well, when he's the Savior, he can't come as anything other. That's who he is. He's yeah. the deliverer. He can't he's help the it. life giver. He, he, he just can't help but be a Savior. Right. You know? He can't help but fix your problems. He can't help but take away your Amen. sin. We were sitting there this morning, got a phone call from uh, from Heston, and he said, hey, I was reading over in Zechariah, and he said, yeah. you know, it gets to this place where it, it says something about there's going in one day he'll remove the iniquity of the nations and he said was that one day talking about 
Jesus on the cross. What you know, other day? I said, what other day could it be? Right. There's no other day. There's no other day that could have taken away the iniquity of the people, but that's who he is because that's, that's what he does because it's who he is. It's who he is because it's what he does. You can't separate him from being a deliverer, a savior, a life changer, a hope giver, and so and, and life and light. Man, absolutely. So you can't get close to him and not get some of that. Yeah. <laughs> Two different kinds of people on the side of the road that day. There was those who could not help but to cry out. Yeah. For what they saw. They and saw the healer. Word. They saw the Savior. They saw the Son of God show up, and they could mm -hmm. not help but acknowledge his presence and cry out for him to do what only he could do. And there were spectators also. But there was other people there that thought the exact opposite. Mm -hmm. Right. It says, Jesus, mm -hmm. tell them to be quiet. Yep. Tell them to shut up, to stop. That's not who you are. You can't do that. You're just a teacher. You're just a man. Point. You tell them to be quiet. Hey. <laughs> Not, if there's anything you need to know right now today is do not let someone silence your voice of praise. Yes. Don't tell anyone yes. that he's not a Savior. Don't tell anyone he's not a Savior. Don't let anyone tell you that because he still is Hosanna today. Mm. He still is coming even Absolutely. in our time, and he still should be welcomed be with praise. Psalm, the psalmist said this, praise is waiting for you. Thanks, and so man. even today, man, yeah. he's still Hosanna. And, and, and I know there's voices out there saying, okay, we'll fix this. This is medical We'll overcome this. No, I think this has already overcome us. That's why we're scrambling. But guess what? There is one who is the overcomer, yep, right. who rules and overrules. His name is Hosanna. Amen. Can I can I jump on this? Jump it's on too it. much Go fun. Ahead. A few weeks ago, I'm, I'm watching a live feed of my dad, uh, their Wednesday night uh, Bible study. He's walking through Revelation. So the part that he was in, he had to refer back to Daniel. And he's teaching in Daniel of the, the seven years of the 77 years and the years and the seven years and all the sevens of the years. And so he really laid it out in ways that I can't do it today. But what he showed was that Daniel wasn't just throwing numbers out there. He was prophesying that from the day the, 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 that it started, he and Dad laid it out. I can't do that for you today. He was showing the exact moment, the day that Hosanna, that Jesus would triumphantly walk into Jerusalem. It was a day that was prophesied years and years and years before. And so here he comes. I'm excited, Brother Mike. Just don't, I, don't I, leave. I, don't I wish there room to run in here. So, <laughs> so here, comes, here comes Jesus on the colt, which is also a prophesied thing. Yeah. And, and it was seen beforehand, it was proclaimed beforehand that on this day he will walk triumphantly, he will ride triumphantly into there. And so yeah. when they said, they're, pros, they're praising Hosanna, Hosanna, the one who comes in the name of the Lord, and the Pharisees say, stop this, Jesus yeah. was basically saying, look, nobody, nobody can stop nobody, this moment. Nobody. This moment is prophesied, it is proclaimed, Ooh, and even yeah. if I tried to make them stop, rocks will begin to sing, That's right. because yeah. this moment has been seen. And here's what I want you to know, this day, what are we on, yeah. the 3rd of April? Right. Yep. 2020, God has already seen this day. Yes, thank you, he Lord. knows thank what tomorrow is going to look like, thank not only Lord. just because he can foresee what next week and what the end of the corona crisis looks like, he's already existing mm -hmm. in the day that it's done. Because of that, our victory has been won. So we don't have to wait for the president to come to the mic and say, okay, we're finished with this. We can say thank you, God, and Hosanna today, today. for the victory that's already been seen. We're thank not working you, toward it. We're already in the deal. moment of victory that's coming. It's okay. a done deal. We were talking about that the other day. He's already been to every tomorrow and come back to <laughs> help you. us through it. You know, while you're looking up what you're looking up, brother, yeah, you find out. I was just thinking in the early 90s, I remember the first time I heard one of the presidents talk about a new world order. And I, my first thought, I thought, wait a minute, man, that's, that's the devil. <laughs> you know, and, and then it dawned on me, what am I saying? I, there's some things that God said are going to take place. You mm -hmm. just can't make them not take place. They're going to happen. Yeah. Perilous times shall come in the end. Pestilences, earthquakes, sure. all rumors of wars and rumors of wars. You know, all those, they're going to happen. You can't change that. But be encouraged by him rather than fearful by him because everything he ever said he was going to do, he's always done. He's doing it again. He's doing and it. he's also said he's coming back. Now, does that mean tomorrow? I don't know. Could be. Mike says... This, this could be, be the day. Yeah, right. <laughs> Ellen but, says her phone is smoking right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, praise God. But you know, uh, man, he is faithful to always do what he's going to do. Go ahead, Corey. Now, when we're thinking about what you just said about praising and calling out on Hosanna, I thought of Second Chronicles 20 with Jehoshaphat. Mm. And as they're going before oh, the army, yeah. again, the battle. they put the worshipers at the head of the battle. Yes, and, and, and man, I was just sitting here thinking about this. Man, maybe we... Maybe we have, even as Christians, we've, we've wrong-sized this, mm. this dilemma and this crisis. Uh, we've, we've focused a lot on governments. We've focused a lot on health organizations. We've focused a lot on personal protection equipment and, 
and, and, and on money and funding. But again, my dad used to tell me this. He said, son, he said, everything has a spiritual origin and it manifests itself in the physical. Good, that's good. Everything has a yeah. spiritual origin, then it manifests itself in the physical. So when we want to address an issue, we got to start in the spiritual so that we can reach to the physical. Amen. So for us, when we cry out Hosanna, I, I, I want you to know this. If you're sitting in the house or you're in your bedroom, you're in the living room, you're with the kids or, or you're in a cubicle still having to work, essential worker, we've been praying for our educators, our medical staff, our governing officials, and all those on the front line, these essential workers trying to slow this, to flatten this curve. But don't think you don't have a place in this. You're not a sit-at-home Christian. Right. You're not a stay-at-home right. faith follower. You have a front-line position according to God's word because you can open your mouth and praise. And there is power in praise. It is the oh, weapon yeah. of our warfare. Amen. So I want you to understand this. While you're sitting there, we're hitting Friday, we're moving into the weekend, which that really don't mean much anymore. Right. Does it? Every day kind of feels weird. But, <laughs> but know this. What if God is calling you to be a weapon of warfare in this battle? Instead of just looking at the fiscal, and I do the same thing, you're looking at the numbers day to day and how it's progressing here or slowing here. Right. But what if you can go to warfare? What if you can get on the front line by simply right here, opening up your mouth? No, you don't have a nurse's degree. No, you don't, you don't supply equipment and you don't have funds to help everybody else in hospitals or whatnot. But guess what? Mm. You are tapped into the yeah, source, that's right. and your mouth is your equipment. Your mm. mouth is oh. your weapon. Your <laughs> mouth is your ministry. Yeah. Cry out, call out, Hosanna as a worshiper. Let's take a step further than that. It's not a what if. God did call you. Mm. He has yeah. empowered yeah. you. If you can hear our voice and you claim to be a Christ follower, you've got everything Open you us, need to be, a, to be a, an able minister of the gospel. You There's a essential. thousand ways that you're, yeah, you, mm. you are essential right now. Matter of fact, give yes. good word. Yes. David, 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 put that on a t-shirt. Earlier, right, about a hundred different ways right now that God can, you, you can have a ministry. Just with your finger right now. There's a share button right there on your screen, yep. right? Doop. Yep. God just God just made you an evangelist because yeah, now territory. boom you're sharing gospel with people and in just a minute we're going to share with you just a simple gospel presentation before we finish. But uh, David, tell them some other ways right now. We discussed some of these earlier. What are some other ways yeah. that right now you can get involved in kingdom work? Yeah, and I love it. I was, my, the thought that crossed my mind is you are a weapon of mass construction. Yes. Amen. Yes. Put that on yes. my yes. With mass your mouth, the, God, the, the, the Holy Spirit's yeah. going to utilize you to be a tool in his hand. A, you know, you to let it. your members, here's Romans chapter 6, yield your members to him as, as weapons Weapon of righteousness. righteousness. Yep. All right, so how can we do that? Well, Brother Todd just said, hit a share button and annex territory for the Lord. Lord, right. as far as his message is going out. <laughs> and man, sure right now, I believe the Lord's going to put somebody's name on your heart. Yeah. Come on. Even now. Give him, Even now. Give him three seconds of, of just stillness to let yeah. him speak that to you. Yes. And that name you just received, you. reach out to him. Yeah. Maybe by a text message, maybe a real life Thank phone you, call. Think about that. Thank you. Tell him you love him. Tell him no. you're thanking. God Thank told you. me to call you and say, I love you and I'm praying for you. Thank you have you, no Father. idea what one moment of encouragement can mean, not just to the person you're going to talk to, but to the people they tell about what you did to encourage them. Right. Yeah. 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 Hey, this is like throwing a, a rock into the water and watching the ripples go, you know, reach out and, and continue to expand. You have no idea where he's going to take one moment of you reaching out to somebody to do that. And I want to say, this has been on my mind, and I have not been saying it, hmm. because it, it deals with money. Right. We always want to pull back. Mm. There's a lot of folks, though, these days that are struggling with a shortage because they can't work, and they're needing mm. something extra. If you've got this extra in your pocket, mm. and God's saying, take that $20 bill, put it under the door, and knock and run, mm. of that person down the street that, you, that, that he's putting on your heart that may need the money to go get them something to eat or pay a bill or whatever. He may use you. They may never yeah. know it was you. Yeah. Be yeah. used of the Lord to do something crazy and radical yeah. like that in these yeah. days, and it'll make an enormous difference. Absolutely. Knock and Absolutely. run. Knock and run. Luke 638. <laughs> Golly. Drive by. Hey, it's, uh, it's hard for us to believe that we're about three or four minutes away from, from uh, 1230. We're not trying to hold hard and fast to that, but just to be considerate of you guys and your time, we, we try to stay fairly close to that. Anything else you guys want to share real quick before mm. we try to wrap this up? I and mean, it's still this, the same old message. Be the church. You are alive in this generation. We are here in this generation at this moment to be exactly who God has equipped us to be, the church. Yeah. And hey, look, so because we've said all week long that we really believe and understand that this is a day when the Lord is tenderizing the hearts of his people, yeah. uh, tenderizing the hearts of people that don't yet know that they're about to belong to him. God is putting people in your life that are more receptive to the gospel than ever before. And you may be watching today 
or maybe you have a friend who shared this with you today, and this is why they shared because they wanted you to hear this. Here's, here's mm. what God's Word says about how you can have a relationship with Jesus and not just a, a wish thing or a hope thing. And this is not just about you trying to go to heaven when you die or trying not to go to hell when you die because God's intent is much larger than that. Mm. He created you for this. Mm -hmm. We on. were made Thanks. for a relationship with Him. Mm. You're never fully alive until He's alive sure. inside of yeah. you. Christ becomes your life. And since He designed you to live in and through you so He could reveal Himself to a world, that's what His purpose is for the rest of your life. And so this isn't just about you and what happens to right. you when you die. Right. This is about Him and what He wants to do right now in this world, in this dark kind of hours through you by shining great light here's what the word of God says very simple in Romans chapter 10 verse 9 it says if you'll confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead now that doesn't just mean if you can say Jesus is Lord but to confess that he's Lord means you speak a, a statement that is true if your heart would honestly say you are Lord and what that means is you're the boss, just like yes. you said earlier. That Mike yes. said, man, wise man once said, "He's the boss. <laughs> Whatever you that. say, I want my will to line up with your will. Amen. I surrender my that will to you. Even you are that. Lord. I want you to lead Even the rest of my life." Yeah. And so that's what it looks like to be a Christ yes. follower, not just a, not just somebody who claims to be a Christian, but a Christ follower yes. because yes. He wants to lead your life. If you'll confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. And believe in your heart that Amen. God raised him from the dead. Now, here's the significance of that. We're not talking about a history lesson Savior. We're not talking about a religion. We're talking about the person of the resurrected Jesus. If God's not working today. on you I right now, and he's made himself <laughs> discoverable today, it's Woo. because he's calling. This is, it's him. If, you, if you're at a place in your heart where you're like, I'm ready, Lord, I, Yes. I think I'm hearing you. That's him. Wow. It's because he's alive. Yes. If you confess with your mouth that he's Lord and believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead. Mm. You can be saved. Yeah. Because with the heart, be saved. man mm. believes unto righteousness. And what that says is something happens on the inside that nobody else could do. I can't do it for you. These guys can't do it for you. Yeah. But if something's happening in you, something's beginning in you, a place of conviction, a place of believing that I really am in need of help. And he really is perfect and everything I need that Jesus was enough yes. and, and even if you don't understand the theology of all of it if right. you just if he brings you to the place to believe you need him and he's enough he said if you'll call on him he'll answer yes Thank with the you. heart on the inside yep. God Thank starts you. something with the heart man believes and is made right with God and then with the mouth confessions Thank made you. to salvation Thank what that means is this when God starts something on the inside of you and it'll be undeniable. It'll be undeniable. Yeah. You won't be able to get away from it. And you'll long for it. And then you respond. It's not just going to stay on the inside. At some point, you can't help but let it come out. Mm -hmm. You can't help but let it come out. And so that's going to look like calling unto him. Later in the chapter, as uh, we, we talked about earlier on another show, uh, he says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And so here's what that needs to look like. Man, if you're at a place where you're ready to give your heart to Christ. Amen. Yes. Uh, you just call on him. Lord, I, I, I know you're real. I, I, I hear you. I sent you. I believe. You said to believe. I believe. I'm calling on you. Save me. Move in and take over. Amen. And so here's what we're going to do right now. Two things. We're going to pray for you. We're going to pray for you. And, uh, and I want to encourage you to do something else. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you, Lord, for people right now who may be watching this in this moment that realize I, he's got me there. He's got me ready. I am hearing him. Father, thank you that you will hear us as we cry out to you. Thank you for the promise of your word. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And for listeners right now, thank you, Father, for giving them faith to call on you. And you know it, it's not a matter of the beautiful, perfect words, but the beautiful, perfect word that we run to, and that is you. So as people call out to you, thank you, Father, that you hear them. And I pray not only, God, that you, you'd hear them. You said you would. But, Lord, would you bring some evidence in their yes, life Lord. that makes it obvious to the hearer today that you've made a, you've brought new life, you've made a change. Would you, would you cause those who may be skeptical about their own salvation, about their own life, would you confirm in them what only you could confirm? God, would you make it evident and real that your spirit is alive and present inside of them? And, Father, we just thank you for that, Lord, and give them every chance to tell somebody about it.
Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hey, look, let me encourage you. Uh, man, find places, ways you can share things uh, with your friends. Also, uh, hey, if by chance you, you watch something like this, whether it's this or somewhere else, God speaks to your heart. And you come under the you come under the power of the Spirit of God to receive salvation. You cry out to Him to be your Lord. Mm -hmm. Hey, it'd be a beautiful thing. Can you imagine? We talked about this a while ago, man. Mm -hmm. And when we said that, it just kind of blew me away. Can you imagine the encouragement that it's going to be to people reading these comments, mm. <laughs> to people that are right alongside you listening, or to the person who shared this with you? For them to see you <laughs> comment in those comments, yeah. I just gave my life to Jesus. Ooh, pray for me. Yeah, pray for me. Yeah, Trust me. There will be great rejoicing. This yeah. is what this day is for. Right. This Thank is what Lord. this hour is for. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, yeah. for an open door for for the gospel yeah. and for hope in people's lives. Not only Amen. that, but the word says if you will Jesus said, if you confess me before men. I, yeah, I'll confess you before my right. father and man what a platform to, yeah, for a, Jesus to turn around to God and say that, that one right there <laughs> praise God, God yeah. for that one I saw that amen heard that yeah <laughs> thank amen. you God hey anything else you guys I really got a thousand things Mike Whew. just a couple a couple more here uh, Ashley from our worship team her cousin Jody has a cut in his cornea mm. and a pretty serious eye infection a lot of pain to go along with that so thank hey Jody. prayers for Jody and oh, the people yeah. Uh, treating him and then uh, asking prayers for Jim Lewin, a man in our community that has lots of uh, health issues, especially breathing and the thing that the Lord would help him uh, yeah, to do that. Sense. Lots of encouragement from online, fellas. Uh, Facebook has run out of the little hearts that float up through there. <laughs> they're, they're out, so man. we have a heart decimate this yeah. morning. Yeah. Thank y'all for I mean, loving us. Like crazy. Uh, oh, hey, thank Mike. you guys for listening, oh, man. Oh, and thank one more note. Part. One more note. One of our uh, uh, regular observers here says... Uh, Yesterday, a woman of God brought money to my door this week. Praise it's happened and this, to me twice this week. This week. Praise two the Lord. Times. Man, praise the Lord. Somebody just paid for a meal or did this or that. Church is on mission. And hey, look here, Shannon Patterson. You've been giving a hard time about these shirts. Hawaii for you, brother. A lot of uh, only positive uh, remarks uh, about that. Okay. Hey, Mike, Mike. Matter of fact, they said, are those other two guys not spiritual? <laughs> <laughs> Mike, would you, would you finish us up by yeah. praying, praying over those? Yeah, be great to to we love you Enjoy guys. Join with us and pray. We love you guys. Lord Jesus, we come to you, recognize you, you as the architect of the universe. Yes, Lord, you made everything, you made us, thank and you God. know us. And Lord, you keep loving us in spite of that. Yeah, so we thank, thank you, Lord. We want to uh, intercede for these two more requests and yes, any unspoken Jody requests that are out there, Lord, that we all have right now. Uh, for, for Jody, with this cut cornea and eye infection, Lord, as he's trying to get in to see a specialist in these difficult times, uh, Lord, we know you're able to make it where he don't need a specialist, Lord, but we don't know your plan. So, Lord, just minister to Jody in your perfect way, Lord, because we know you're going to heal him. And for Jim Lewin, Lord, that you would just help him be able to breathe, Lord, and help this fellow to have a quality of life that you want him to have because you're not limited. Father, you are able, Lord. We thank you for this opportunity to meet at noon and to offer encouragement, not that we have have it but you have it Lord. Yes, so we're pointing them to him and lord we want we want you to heal all these needs lord to deal with them and lord use us yes. lord help us as the christ followers not the preachers but the christ followers to be the church yeah. in amen. these uncertain times amen. and we know amen. you've got us in jesus name jesus. Amen. 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 amen 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 bless you guys be the, tomorrow. Tomorrow. Be the church It will not let me hit finish. Oh, low battery. Now finish.